Good morning. Woo, I'm louder than I normally am. That's good. It is wonderful to be in worship together this morning, and we'd like to welcome everyone here, especially those that are worshiping with us for the first time or you haven't been here for a little while. We are happy that you are back. I want to remind everyone to please um, take the connection card out that is in your bulletin um, and fill that out so that you are able to turn it in um, when the offering plate comes back around so that you're able to do that so that we know you're here but also that we can connect with you a little bit more. I want to make sure that you look at the back of your bulletin um, for all of the announcements that are that are there and the things that are happening in the life of our church. There are a few changes that I want to make sure you'll see that the pastor study um, at 10 a.m that was scheduled for tomorrow has been canceled, um, and I'll explain that in just a little bit, as well as our conversations with the pastor on Monday night as well as Tuesday night. Those will be rescheduled, um, so we wanted to make sure that you knew about that. Um, Chris is not able to be with us today, and he sends his love and, um, to you, and, and sorry that he is not able to be here. He is with his mom on the coast, she has been put in hospice care, and so he is staying there with his family. They have been able to put her in a private room, so she is comfortable, and they are able to be with her a little bit more. Um, he texted me this morning and said to please um, tell you that he would miss you, and I hope you're okay with this. I wrote him back, told him that we would miss him too, um, but that we, would, that we were also sending all of our love and our prayers to him as well. So continue to lift him up. As I said, the conversations with the pastor will be rescheduled. Those have been wonderful um, events in the life of our church with small groups meeting and Chris getting to know all of you. Um, but the great thing that happened on Tuesday night at the one that I was a part of at our house was the connections that were made with everybody around the circle. So those will be rescheduled and if you were a part of that, please know that, that somebody will get back with you on when that will happen. As you'll notice this morning, our pyramids are still white. Um, we kept them white so that we are honoring the veterans, those that we remember as well as those that have fought for our country. Veterans Day is on Tuesday and this is a way for us to be able to honor them. So we lift up those families as well as those that have served our country and continue to do so. We are happy to be in worship together and it is a wonderful time for us to come together as the body of Christ. And so it is great to see all of your smiling faces. And we as a staff, um, even though Chris is not able to be here, continue um, to be blessed by being um, on staff at Crossgates Methodist. And thank you for letting us be a part of that. Let us begin our time of worship together as our chancel choir leads us in our introit.
Lisa Tony, Lisa Tony for a special presentation. Good morning. I am Lisa Tony. I am one of the 93 members of our local UMW unit. Um, our local UMW unit supports all kinds of missions here locally within our church by doing things like the bake sale to raise money to help support the church's mission opportunities, by supporting local food pantries, by supporting um, offering food to some of the children in some of our local school systems. We also help support missions throughout our church by offering help to the Methodist Children's Home, the Moore Community House, the Wesley Foundation, and several others, as well as some of the national mission opportunities. So today we're trying to take just a minute to help highlight some of the things that we've been doing and to help honor a few special people who have, through their example, really shown that they have a heart for missions and have been able to be good examples for us on how we can make a difference within our communities. So, by saying that, I would like to ask if Joanne Cavan can come forward. Can you come? tell too much, <laughs> so I won't. Uh, Bubba and Joanne joined our church in 1980. She's been active, very active in UMW, and just one of those, just called Joanne. She can do it. She's very talented. She has her own business, and we need to say prayers. Her husband's health is really decreasing now and uh, she's pretty much homebound a lot of days but when she can she is always there to participate in anything that our church has so Joanne it's a pleasure and love that I present Another name that will be very familiar to everyone here is Debbie Jones. And I think that Debbie was not able to make it with us tonight, but we will present. Is she back there? I've been looking for her. Um, Debbie is a member of the Friendship Circle, which is the circle that I'm in. Most of us are working, and so we meet in the evenings. Um, most of us hold full-time jobs, but you know Debbie has a heart for mission because you see her at our mission fair every year, preparing, 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 and giving tirelessly. And she does the same for our circle. We, we're kind of, um, we're not as um, dedicated maybe as Fran's circle because most of us do have so many other things that we've got going in our lives. But um, she, she's there when I need her to be there for the circle, and she's there for UMW, and she leads that mission fair so well. So, Debbie, my pleasure to give you a mission. We have one more person that we'd like to honor today, and that is Frances Savage. If you could please come forward. And in case you haven't figured out, they don't know that they're getting these. It's a complete surprise. <laughs> and Tom Bunton will be escorting her today. I'm honored to be able to present Francis with a UMW Outstanding Service Award. Francis is my friend, my Sunday school teacher, my neighbor, and my advisor on many topics. Francis has been an active member of Crossgate since 1974 and has faithfully participated in the ministries and missions of our church. In addition to serving on various committees, for the, she served as three years as the lay leader and two years as chairperson and church counselor. 
She serve, currently serves on the executive committee of UMW and teaches circle in joint, in joint meetings. She has served as chairperson of the personnel committee of the Mississippi United Conference from 1992 to 1999, and she was a key motivator and chairperson of the committee that planned and established the Cross Kids Children's Center next door. In addition to her church work, Frances taught English and social studies at Brandon High School for many years, and she represented Rankin County in the Mississippi House of Representatives from 18, 1984 <laughs> to, to 1991. She's not that old. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, thank you for letting us take a minute to honor some of the members, and not every year, it doesn't always work out that it's even UMW members who receive these honors. We have been very fortunate to have many of our members that have a heart for missions, and we'll be looking for other people to honor in the future as well. I will take just a minute to put a plug in for our Tuesday night meeting. Tuesday night, we will have a general meeting in the CAC, and we will have someone from the United Methodist, uh, from the Methodist Children's Home who will be coming and um, being able to collect some things that we're going to be giving them for the holidays and our very own Allison Dickerson will be speaking about other opportunities that we might have in missions as well. Thank you so much. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and unknown and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God but keep his commandments. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's continue to worship with the sharing of our joys and concerns. We share together in the joy of marriage of Hunter and Carly Nicholson. And our concerns are Dolores Irvin, Fred Long, Larry Creel, Melba Nail, Dr. Ann Myers Schimmel, Molly Shepard, the family of Reverend Chris Cumbus, and Barbara Herring.
Father, we come to you this morning preparing our hearts to encounter you. We pray that your word would be well represented here today, and that you would speak truth through Reverend Allison. God, we thank you for this time today that you've given us together. Open our minds, our ears, and our hearts that whatever message you have prepared for us would be received. We also lift up all of the names we've shared aloud from our prayer book. Continue to be with the tired, the sick, and those in mourning. May your presence be the light that shines for them through their dark times. Continue to lead them and us to prayer as you first taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, the children would please come forward for our children's moment with Sherry Blankenship. I know you really like my look, right? I, I'm kind of sorry that I came this way, but we, I mean, when I tell you why I look this way, you're not going to believe it. Are you ready? How many of you, whew, I'm so nervous. I mean, whew, I'm sorry I have my phone in my hand, but I'm waiting for another message because they're going to call it any moment. How many of you know who Taylor Swift is? Raise your hand. Taylor Swift. How many of you know who One Direction is? Ever heard of them? Do y'all know? Yes, not yes, yes, yes. Well, just before I came to church, I got a call. I mean, it was kind of a call. It was sort of a call. Okay, it was just a news story that I read. But it said that Taylor Swift and One Direction were going to be in our area and they heard that because I do children's moment now and I do the children's ministry stuff and I can't sing in the choir and I've got some extra singing time on my hands that they want me to sing with them. <laughs> Why is that funny? I, 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 I don't think it's funny at all. I'm so excited. So, I mean, I had to come like this because, I mean, I kind of already had a commitment here to come and do this, but it's Taylor Swift and One Direction, and me. It doesn't get much better than that. Wouldn't you agree? You wanna go with me? I don't agree. No? What? So, I mean, I'm in the process. If only I had known sooner, I could have been better prepared, but we're gonna make it all work. So I brought stuff with me. Do you think I have enough curlers in my hair that my hair's gonna look like I want it to look when I take them down? And, I mean, I'm really excited. I brought my hairbrush because, I mean, we're going to talk while, while I'm talking here. We'll get ready, and I'll be ready because they're going to call any minute now. And I, I brought my lipstick, so y'all just keep, you know, talk among yourselves here while I get ready. And I'm going to be ready for them, right? I mean, I'm so excited. So, um, and now I also need, like, I need some hairspray so that these curls really do what I want it to do. I mean, if I'd only known sooner, I could have been so much more prepared. Don't you think? <laughs> I've been warming up my singing voice. Do you like my lipstick? Does it work? What? 
It's halfway on. Is it just halfway on? Well, it'll be okay. I'm sure it looks lovely. Okay, so they're going to call any moment now, right? Are they going to call me? I'm not ready. Why am I not ready? Oh, 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 you just want me to take this off and then I'll be ready, right? Am I ready now? I got to take my curls out? Oh, okay, let's see what I got going here. Is it pretty? <laughs> well, you know what? If it's not pretty and if, if I'm not ready, I don't have anybody to blame but Taylor Swift and One Direction. Because if they had just let me know sooner, I would be so ready. Hey, Ben, where's Ben? Ben, back, back there. We're going to work up something, right? We can, we can work. Okay, good. Excellent. <sighs> okay, all kidding aside, I really, I get that One Direction and Taylor Swift probably aren't going to call today. But did you know that we do know something that's a sure thing? And we're called to be ready at any moment in time. Does anybody know what's a sure thing that the Bible tells us? What's the Bible tell us? Who's coming back? Jesus, Jesus is coming back. And who's he coming back for? He's coming back for us. But sometimes we get so caught up in our lives and the fact that we think that Taylor Swift might call that we forget to get ready. And he calls us to be ready at any moment in time. You don't want to get caught with curlers like these in your hair when Jesus comes back. Now, Jesus doesn't really care about what we look like on the outside. He wouldn't care if I had lipstick on only half my face. But what he does care about is that we don't wait too long to make sure that our heart is ready for him because he's coming. We don't know when, but he has promised us that he is coming. And when he comes, he's coming for us. Our job is to be ready whenever that happens. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the fact that even though in this world we may work things up in our heads and we get so busy and we make commitments, Lord, and we can only half do the things that we say we're going to do, that when you make a commitment to us, you make a promise to us, Lord, that you keep it. Your promises are true and faithful and good, and you are coming back for us, Lord. Help us to be ready. In your name we pray. Amen. You may go to children's worship. Let us continue to worship God with the giving of our tithes and our offerings.
lesson, which comes to us from Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to, the, and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. So as the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Thank you, Carol Choir and beautiful bells with your song, as well as the handbell choir and the chancel choir. What beautiful music we are blessed with here at Crossgates United Methodist Church. Will you pray with me now? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hiding in a field. It's like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. And these are just some of the ones that are in Matthew. So you can imagine how confused the disciples may have been when they heard Jesus begin to speak this phrase, the kingdom of heaven is like. Our passage for today begins in this familiar way. And as I looked at scholars' thoughts um, about this particular passage, I found some interesting ideas. One read, sincere Christians are the wise bridesmaids and hypocrites, the foolish ones. Another said, our discomfort with the parable of the bridesmaids likely arises from self-awareness. Most of us find, know ourselves as wise in some contexts and foolish in others. And in one entitled, Hope and Help for Foolish Bridesmaids, the author stated, focus on the core issue of waiting and admit quite frankly that the kind of waiting Matthew is encouraging through this parable is hard. Waiting for something way overdue, waiting for something you're not sure will even come, waiting that involves active preparation when you're not even sure what you should be waiting for. That kind of waiting is challenging. Each week as a staff, we gather together and read the scripture lesson for the week. And then we share and discuss what stuck out to us through that passage, how God might be speaking through us through that particular scripture. And if you've ever been around me in a meeting before, you know that I always have a piece of paper and a pen to, so that I can take very diligent notes, but I also like to doodle a lot. So I was sitting there as Chris read the passage. And immediately as he was reading chapter 25 of those verses we heard earlier, I immediately wrote down, stay alert, stay awake, with three exclamation points after it. And then I wrote, you never know when he'll be back. But when we shared our thoughts, Chris's take on it took me a little bit by surprise. Rather than focusing on staying alert and awake for when he comes back, he spoke these words. The kingdom of heaven is like a party. That in the midst of our sadness, the kingdom of God will be much different. We will choose to focus on the joy of God's gift to us. A celebration in the middle of the woes. And then I saw this commentary that spoke even more to that focus. We must desire strength from God's hand, which may serve us as a torch while we walk through the darkness to bring us to our desired end. Otherwise, if we become slothful and negligent because we are weary of our pains and trials, we shall be kept from entering the doors. Explore this with me for just a little bit. When you plan a party, Yes, you have to make sure you have all the details down. You've got to prepare the food, you're going to do the decorations, you've got to invite the guests, that's pretty important. There are a lot of different things that you have to do to get ready for that party. But it's worth it, right? Because you know what that end result's going to be. You know that you are going to be gathered together with those that you love. You know that you will enjoy being around them, that relationships will be strengthened and new ones will be formed where forgiveness and acceptance is given. For the past week, Catherine, our three-year-old, has been making and passing out invitations to her birthday party. 
which she has said is a sleepover, by the way, four-year-old birthday party. Um, she has been giving these to everyone, and we were at the wedding last weekend for Hunter Nicholson, and she even stopped Vicki in the hotel and handed her an invitation to make sure she knew she was invited to the birthday party. She is so excited. She has been planning it out, and she has been anticipating this party that she knows is going to be amazing and fun. And her birthday isn't until the middle of March. <laughs> so when we see these bridesmaids preparing for their bridegroom to come, the diligent ones were the most prepared, not necessarily because they were smarter, but because they knew what they needed to do for that end result. The others procrastinated. They were the foolish ones that just thought the day would come soon, but certainly not soon enough that they really had to be prepared. Do you have people like that in your life that procrastinate? That until they have that deadline or that event that's staring them in the face, do they ever truly get ready for it? Well, when I told Matt this part of my sermon, he was pointing straight at me. <laughs> and if I'm honest with myself, I can be that procrastinator. And when it comes to waiting for Christ's return, I probably go on to sleep all too often, not really expecting that it could happen any day. We look at this passage this morning not to scare us, not to give us a feeling that if we go to sleep and we don't wake up in the morning that we should be afraid of where we might spend eternity. It's not to scare us into salvation. We read these verses to remind us not to get so caught up in our own problems, our, re our seasons of woe, that we don't see that there is a greater purpose for us here on earth that God created us for a reason. And our preparation for this party of the kingdom of heaven should be focused, but it also should be a joyous one. Because you see, the sing kingdom of God is not only what we will be in when we are with God in heaven. The kingdom of God can be a reality here on earth as well. Jesus spoke of the kingdom of heaven being inside each of us, as well as in the hereafter. We are to live on this earth as if we have already seen God's face. As if we've already experienced that pure joy that only Christ can grant us. Spreading the word about this awesome party that we should want everybody to be a part of. We should be passing out those invitations each and every day, whether our party is in four months, like Catherine's, or tomorrow. One of the songs that I've grown to enjoy is by Eliza E. Hewitt. It was written in 1898, When We All Get to Heaven. And I know some of you younger people may never have heard of it before or sung it. And a while back, I thought of it as an old song that I would only hear at our family church. Carr United Methodist Church. I pictured the little old ladies singing this song. And unless Aunt Madeira was playing the piano, would it seem just a little off key? But I've heard it more in the past few years, and it resonates to me with pure joy. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. The song goes on to say, let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. So why wait? Why wait until our time on earth is done? Why not make sure that the kingdom of God is here on earth now? We enter the sanctuary each and every week. We should do so with rejoicing, for we are gathered again with our brothers and sisters of God.
that the greatest celebration and party there could ever be on this earth is just here waiting for us to participate. As we were saying the Lord's Prayer this morning, I loved having the carol choir sit right here because their voices were loud as they prayed that prayer to God. Every voice, no matter what age, is in this room. That's the kingdom of God. How can you not get excited about that? And as we leave these doors, we should be smiling and filled with joy. For we know that we have praised God, that we have heard his words spoken and sung, that we have been forgiven for all the times that we screwed up before we walked in here, that we have been lifted up from our many burdens and our worries that we hold on to during the week. For if we truly believe what we say on the first Sunday of every month during our time of Holy Communion, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Say it with me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. If we truly believe that, then why wait? Let the party start now. For Christ has risen. He is here. He is in our lives each and every day, moving in amazing ways. I have a guilty pleasure in my life. I love to watch the Hallmark Channel. And I see some of you nodding your head. Some are the husbands and smiling because your wives may do that too. I love the movies. I love them because most of them are pretty wholesome and you can watch them even if Taylor and Catherine walk in the room. I don't have to turn it automatically. But I love the movies because they have such great lessons. Well, they've started playing Christmas movies now. And I must admit, I've already watched some of them even though I know we're not in Advent yet. But there was this movie on that I watched and it was about a man, the part, the scene that I was watching was about a man who had had many sorrows and pains in his life. And his friend was encouraging him to have faith, to keep holding on, and to believe that there can be hope again. Well, the older man asked, how do you expect me to believe in hope again? And then the camera panned around and it saw all these children and it, and it showed you all the families that were coming together for a common cause. And then his friend responded to him, look around. How can you believe in anything else? Well, look around. See those you love, those you've known for years, those you're just now getting to know those that may look very different from you, that may be a different age from you, those you think you may not have much in common with, your friends, your family, God's children of all ages gathered in this room. And the most important part about it is we share a faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior, and we know firsthand of the grace and the hope and the love that only he can provide. Look around. This may be just what the kingdom of heaven is supposed to be. How can we believe in anything else? Let us pray. What a joy and a blessing to gather in your name this day, O oh Lord. To be surrounded by loved ones, our family of God who walk with each of us. May we show this world what the kingdom of God can truly be on this earth inviting them to the party every chance we get. It's in your most precious name that we pray. Amen.
Our hymn of invitation this morning is, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. It'll be on the screen as well as in your hymnals on page 540. During this hymn, um, I would like to invite David and Melody Ivy to meet me down front um, for their membership into this um, wonderful community that we have here. So let's stand and sing together as the body of Christ. I love thy kingdom, Lord. Excited to welcome Melody and David Ivy here at Crossgates United Methodist Church. They have transferred their membership from St. John's United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, and we are happy to have you. You are already a part of our United Methodist tradition, but I ask you, um, as you are a part of Crossgates United Methodist Church, will you support our church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Well, welcome. We invite all of you um, after the choral amen to greet them here and um, meet your new brothers and sisters in Christ. They have been a part of our Connect class that will, that's a four weeks that learns a little, to teach us a little bit more about the church. Um, and I know that they will be anxious to meet all of you. So receive this benediction. Go in peace, knowing that God loves you, knowing that God's kingdom is on this earth. Go with joy and spread the word about our party in the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.